we've done so far, so it's easier for you to follow. I also want to go over, go over some of the stuff I forgot to mention in the other videos. Here's what we've done so far. Uh, the bottom bracket, the crank, uh, the fork, the handlebar and stem, the tires, the disc for the brakes, and the cassette. Here are the things I forgot to mention. You see the crank here? It's being held by two bolts facing opposite sides. You can't just tighten one, one bolt all the way and do this one. You have to do it little by little on each bolt. So the tightening power is spread evenly. The same thing with the stem, with the bolts here facing opposite directions. Now the handlebar, you see these four bolts here? You have to do them diagonally in an X pattern. Let's say you start from here. You go here, here, and here. And keep going back and forth until all of them are evenly tightened. This, you see the gaps here? Um, you want to make sure they're both the same Top, bottom, left, right. I forgot to mention that the fork is an air fork. Unlike my old bike, it doesn't use spring. It uses air. And I can adjust the air pressure through this valve with a fork pump according to my weight. This is really important because if you're a heavier person with not enough suspension, not enough air pressure, um, you'll make your fork bottom out. Or, if you're a lighter person and you have too much air pressure, your fork will be too stiff. My forks has a remote lockout feature that allows me to lock the, the suspension when I'm, when I'm pedaling. You don't want to be bouncing when you're pedaling because uh, you'll lose energy and speed. Now I can unlock it when I'm going downhill where I need it. So that's it for the midway recap, guys. In the next video, we're going to install the brake calipers. I'll see you then. Bye!